Hi, this is Gene Acasella from Port St. John, Florida, and you're listening to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. Start the game! Let's go! We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. This is a show where we talk about all things that are important to the world of barbecue and grilling. Originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening's live fire fun and frivol of the show. If you want to get in touch with the show this evening, there are two bits of contact information that I would like to share with you at this very moment. Take it away, big voice guy. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to greg at bbqcentralshow.com. Or on the Twitter and Instagrams at BBQ Central Show. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening in case you get the newsletter coming up in about 13 minutes from now, maybe 12 minutes. He is a longtime sponsor of this show. He is a longtime friend of mine and my family. And I would like to thank friend of his family as well. And an all-around great human being, a patriot, the list goes on and on, but has created one of the most talked about and successful cookers to have ever hit the market. Very simple to operate, producing the most succulent and tasty food that you could possibly stuff in your pie hole. And it's all done well below the cost of most elaborate cookers on the market these days. I am, of course, talking about making his triumphant return back to the Barbecue Central Show jungle. Noah Glanville from Pit Barrel Cooker, pitbarrelcooker.com. We're going to be talking about the business of Pit Barrel. We're going to be talking about any new products. Last year, we touched on some new things that didn't necessarily materialize in 2020, perhaps for a number of various reasons, not the least of which is you know what. So we'll touch base on that. Plus, I have something very sexy to show you that's just off to my left. We'll tease a few other things as well. Noah Glanville, 14 pass. Then we'll move to 35 pass the first hour. And of course, I will be joined by regular fourth Tuesday of the month guest, barbecue journalist Derek Riches. He has written a new piece on the olden days of barbecue internet, which I was kind of a part of. I've been a part of all of this on the internet stuff. And I didn't even really know it. But here I am 14 years later doing a live show. Before that, doing a podcast. Before that, having a barbecue form. We're going to talk to Derek about all of that. I'm going to let him know that I've booked the creator of Smoked Barbecue Source, Joe Clements, on this show. We'll get his reaction to that and some follow-up questions I might want to ask him when I have him on. A host of other items as well. Then we'll move to the second hour. It is the fourth Tuesday of a month, although we have a bonus month next week, five weeks in June, if you can believe it. But in the fourth Tuesday of the month in the second hour, we have the malfeasance of the barbecue community rejoining me. That is the Embedded Correspondence segment. Everybody loves it. We're getting ready to blow the actual foundations out of a high-end steakhouse chain. An expose will be revealed months in the making. The due diligence has been put in. The work has been put in. The results have been tracked and will be revealed. And it may just blow your mind 
on what we have found as it relates to something called the Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. And I will leave it at that. Closing out the second hour. You know it. I know it. Everybody loves it, right? Month three. Where we find ourselves deep in the semifinals of American Idol Barbecue Central Show Edition, where three remain. Two will make it to the finals next month. John Solberg from Michigan is in. Returning champion Jeff Rice is in. And your humble host is in. And we will see how the semifinals transpire here this evening. We are ready to sing and sing our hearts out for you, if you can believe it. So look forward to that. Noah Glanville coming up next. Derek Riches after Noah. Embedded Correspondence will kick the second hour, and we will close it down with the American Idol Season 2 semifinals. Month three, as we are headlong ready to run season two finals in July, my birth month, and what could be better than that? 216-220-0966, or get at me through email, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Don't forget, you can follow me socially, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Snaps at BBQ Central Show for a live video feed. You can go to Facebook and Twitch slash BBQ Central Show on YouTube this week slash BBQ Central Show. I'm sorry, slash R.D. Rempe on YouTube. Let me start here this evening. You know, over the years, many of you have asked about having or me devising some kind of an ad-free option for the podcast feed. And I would love to sit here and tell you that with the rollout of Apple's new subscription service last week, that this is going to be something that will easily be accomplished through one of their offerings but hell no it's not easy and they don't know how to answer emails in any kind of respectable time frame and there's no videos to guide an idiot like me on how to set it up properly although i think i'm doing it exactly as they say so it's not happening through the apple podcast subscription at the moment I'm waiting on email replies back to my technical questions. However, I have found something that might be even better and much easier for an option. I'm sure many of you have heard of this site called Patreon. I have created an ad-free feed that you can subscribe to if you want. It's five bucks a month. It will be updated each Wednesday and Thursday as the traditional podcast feed is. You will get access to a private RSS feed. Well, it's two things. You can listen to the feed on the website or on your app, uh, the Patreon app through your phone, or even better, you can take the RSS feed that is privately generated for paying subscribers, go to your podcast app like Google Podcast or Apple Podcast, and then you can stick that feed into the subscribe by URL portion of your app. I can help you with that if you don't know how to do it. And it will appear right in your favorite podcast platform app as it would under any other normal circumstance except sans the reads. The website, patreon.com slash BBQ Central Show because it's always slash BBQ Central Show no matter what I'm talking about. Now, if you're fine with the way it is, good. If you want to try the ad-free version, good. Doesn't bother me at all. Just giving you an option. If it's something you have always wanted to try or get through the show just a little bit quicker, and you don't want to hit the fast-forward button if you do that, this is an option. I might use it for other bonus content stuff in the future. I have nothing planned in that regard, so you're not missing out otherwise. So if you want to give it a shot, it's very minimal investment. Support the show, whatever. By the way, it took me a whole whopping 45 minutes to do all of this on the Patreon page from beginning creation till end and publish. Apple should take freaking notes. It should not be this hard to do, Apple. Get it together. Again, patreon.com slash BBQ Central Show if you want it. Listener feedback from the show. Ed in Kansas writes, 
Greg, is anyone else enjoying the reading the passages in that horse meat book? I want to believe that you are making this up, but then I see you reading it out of the book itself, which means someone actually wrote this. And I love how you point out the little tidbits of how the writing style was back in the 50s. I can't wait to hear the next passage. By the way, I would not eat a horse. Just putting it out there. All right. We have you on record, Ed, in Kansas. Ryan in Arizona. Greg, I'm a big pizza fan. I really enjoyed the segment with Matt Frampton. I'm going to pick up his new seasonings soon. I've used his dough and sauce for months. It's so easy and really delicious. I don't disagree, Ryan. It's fabulous. Terry in New York. Daniel Vaughn's remark about giving famous Dave his list for best Central Texas sausage was so funny I spit coffee out when I was listening to it last Friday. I hope everyone caught that. By the way, I am not from Texas, but I do appreciate Daniel's point of view on Texas and the industry in general. Good job getting him as a quarterly guest. Thank you. Just a smattering of feedback, in case you were wondering. Corey Gilbert from Ohio says he tried horse tenderloin. He's from Huron, Ohio, by the way. Not too far from me. Let me talk to you quickly about Yoder Smokers before we get over to Noah Glanville. Yoder Smokers designs and builds all of their products in the USA. And building pride through craftsmanship and world-class customer service is the backbone of how they've built their company. This approach translates into what can be a truly bespoke styled product that elevates gatherings with friends and family they are honored to have a trusted place in the backyards of america from pellet grills to wood fueled offset pits or charcoal grills consistent blue ribbon flavor has become synonymous with the yoder smokers name make no mistake yo or mistake make (laughs) make no mistake yoder smokers flavor driven design is unique to each style of pit and their team has developed the cookers to perform time and time again while outlasting the competition for generations to come. It's this generational thought that is rooted in their handmade products and defines the integrity of their core values. American-made quality and endless flavors. These are the benchmarks of Yoder Smokers. You can visit them at yodersmokers.com to grab yours today. Once again, that's yodersmokers.com and grab yours today pellets, wood-fired offsets, grills, fireplaces, they have it all. I'm looking for Noah Glanville. I don't see him yet, but I'm sure he's racing to the green room because he knows I'm a nervous Nelly. When we come back, we'll have him and we'll talk about Pit Barrel Cook. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening to the number one most downloaded barbecue and grilling podcast anywhere. The Barbecue Central Show. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, creators of automatic pit temperature control devices, sellers of ceramic cookers with built-in power draft fans and accessories to make your barbecue and grilling life easier. Visit bbqguru.com for more information or call them at 800-288-GURU. The Barbecue Guru continuing to be a breakthrough in barbecue technology. My first guest this evening, the co-founder of Pit Barrel Cooker. Pit Barrel is continuing to enjoy success on many levels. Tonight we will learn even more about the business, the cooker, some new things going on as well over the next weeks and months. So let's go ahead and race to the hotline. And welcome back, good friend and good friend of the show, Noah Glanville. Hey, Noah. Hey, Greg, how are we doing? Uh, we are doing absolutely fabulous. Let me, sell, let me tell you something. You look great. You sound even better. Oh, my God. I never knew you had such dulcet tones. Sing to me. Well, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> no singing? All right. That, that, that's Amber. Noah, you and the family still are, or I should say, are you still living by the family rule of, quote, no cave cow, unquote, made famous by your sons, Easton and Max? 
Yes. Yes. We, we, we try to avoid cave, cave cow at all, at all expense. No matter what. <laughs> no matter what. But sometimes someone tries to serve you cave, cave cow. It, it, it does happen. Yeah. And everyone, you can spot those cave cows coming to your plate as well. So we warn everybody, keep an eye out for cave cow, especially when you're in those restaurants, right? Absolutely. Let's start here. Last year, we talked about pit barrel cooker. And we talked about something that was, was it the, was, was the acronym PBX or uh, was that what it was? A big or a bigger, bigger version of the biggest current pit barrel. Yep. The, the, the PBX right. it's uh, it has definitely been a topic. And uh, your next question is probably when, when is it coming out? Well, since it didn't see light of day last year, perhaps for a a various number of reasons that are all legitimate business reasons. Is it something that is on the board for 2021? Absolutely. And, you know, there's just been so many shifts in business and we could talk for hours about that, but uh, nobody wants to hear about that. But, you know, the, the, the biggest things are making sure it comes to the market responsibly to the consumer, ultimately that we're making all the right decisions, the quality's right and um and and the timing's right the you know i would have loved to have had it out years ago but um you know this this will be a game changer for restaurants caterers um you know competition but just really any events that people want to be able to produce that same amazing pit barrel flavor and food but on mass level so it will be out barring nothing nothing too crazy you know we're looking um to start receiving the product in you know end of end of july but we should definitely have it available to the consumer in in august is it wrong for people to think that because it's not necessarily a technically advanced uh, cooker as far as software and electronics and what you would typically see in let's say a pellet cooker that this is something you just should be able to get to market rapidly uh i think so um it, it's it's very similar to to the pit barrel cooker but you know porcelain coating something it, it hasn't been done before and that's that's the whole point of of wanting to porcelain coat something the right way and and it and it be um it be done right and that those have been some of the some of the biggest challenges Noah Glanville joining us here on the show. Pitbarrelcooker.com is the website as we're addressing the PBX. Also, there was mention of a stainless steel cooker at some point last year. Is that still on the drawing board or perhaps even closer for a consumer to purchase? Uh, Yeah, I would say later in 2022, a stainless steel model. We really wanted to complete the family of, um, you know, to be completely transparent, really complete the family, the the Pitbarrel Jr., the PBC, and and then the PBX for you know m- much you know, larger c- cook capacity, but uh, nailing that and then moving on to you know something that's uh, on the higher end for the people that just want the, the 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 cat daddy cooker and and everything else. I'm going to grab over to my left, and I'm going to <coughs> oh my god present something here. Look at this now. I don't know if we're getting ahead of the game here, as they say, but I thought maybe we should, whether you agree or not, I thought we should at least begin the hype machine because this is something, look, it's uh, it's something that everybody's seen before, but it's different in a way as well. This is a cutting board, a wood cutting board, and uh, it is, I don't know if everybody can see that, end, gra- end grain, I think is the... Uh, let me pull up a bit. Yeah, there we go. End grain is the shot right there. That's who's, I guess, making it. So what can you tell me about this extremely heavy? And, I mean, this uh, juice channel is deep. And it's got a great uh, width to it, something I don't normally see with things that include a juice channel. So how do you get involved with these guys? So I can tell you everything about it um, and, until you tell me to stop. Well, we're super proud of this product. Um, you know, it's made of America's finest hardwoods that we can get our hands on walnut and maple locally sourced um, in, around the Kentucky area. We ma- manufacture every board right at our facility. 
and um, have spent a small fortune to be able to absolutely master and come up with a Rolls Royce of cutting boards at an affordable price. And so, you know, very similar to our model with pit barrel cooker, it's something that um, you, you're going to think you, it'll be one of the greatest purchases you ever made. And you're going to say, I can't believe I spent a fraction of the price on some of the other cookers that are thousands of dollars. So we wanted to create the most unbelievable ultimate cutting board and finally answer the call of, you know, a super wide uh, juice trough. And, and it's very frustrating to spend hundreds of dollars on a cutting board and then run to, in, into the kitchen and grab uh, paper towels and rags to, to clean up the juice. So you never have to do that with this. Um, it's, there's not another cutting board on the market that is, is going to be better quality. And, you know, from the pattern to the, to the, to just the entire finish and how it, how you receive it from the packaging, every touch is, is, has been well thought out. Um, you know, the pattern kind of reminded me, I wanted something similar to what just, just before I got out of the out of the military after deploying to Iraq and got back, the, the Marine Corps had switched over to digital camis. And so mm-hmm. I I've I always loved that look. And I thought I'd love to create a board that had some of that digital cami look, but is still elegant, as you've seen. Um, you know, the the equipment that that we use is state of the art and and you really need that for precision which is what it requires to make an end grain cutting board so has not been easy it's been a year in the making of planning to bring that product to to market you know everything that i wish i had been able to do uh, when we started pit barrel cooker with the the bandwidth and the capital to really be able to do it right and show how we can bring a, a brand to market uh that is right by the consumer and it's it's killer as, as you've seen um, I, I think from, from every touch to if someone got it as a gift, it's affordable and, you know, compared to what other, other cutting boards on the market are, uh, this is a screaming deal. Are there multiple sizes or are you just operating with one? Yep. Th- there's a, a large, medium and small. We, we call it kind of the, the, the first ones, the larger ones, a cutting board. We have the, excuse me, the carving board. And then the medium is a cutting board, and then the smaller is the charcuterie board. Mm-hmm. We kind of identify them that way. Um, you know, the large one is a is a big, and and that's the thing. I've always been a cutting board snob. I I always like the biggest cutting board to get my hands on, and you were usually entertaining. You know, we want to we want to cook is is as much as we can. So that's twenty four by eighteen by two and a quarter inches. The medium is eighteen by fourteen by two inches, and the small is sixteen by twelve by an inch and three quarters. So stout, heavy duty, you know, when you get it into your hand, it's like, this is, this is a hell of a product and a um, l- lot of care and time. And it, it's, you know, it's not easy making an ingrained cutting board perfect every time and, and to do it by, 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 by the mass volume. So it's, um, it's pretty cool. What makes a good cutting board? You mentioned having one of the best ones on the market now with this end grain product. What makes a good wood cutting board? So starting out with the best grade of product, getting getting the finest woods, but in in, in the right condition, um, the, the 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 right curing time, then you know from the glue up process, using the best glue, to to put that together, um, you know you'll notice with with our product, and if you look at other cutting boards, you'll see the seams, and and sometimes you can almost stick your fingernail in, in, in those seams. This is super fine, and and you'll notice it's it's um. It just it's absolute precision is what's required to make an end grain the you know and they're almost they're self-healing and you you'll see that on you know on different blogs and, and information better on the knives um you know they they don't have the cuts in them like like a regular edge grain cutting board would be which is usually a, a lot less expensive and you know they'll last longer and this is something that you know it'll wear like iron uh, it's something that you will pass down to your to your children and really have in the family that you know it, absolutely and you know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We have the care products that we've been thoughtful about to, to come out with, and you know all that should launch on our website. You're the you're the first to 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 talk about it, so that's cool. The um, uh, all, all this should be out barring anything crazy, you know, this Friday. So we're, we're excited. And, and like you say, I mean, we, we expect when, when you get it, people are going to say, man, this is exactly what we've been looking for the juice groove. Um, and it, we were calling it the, the juice channel, but, uh, 
but it, it, that, that sounds a little bit better. The juice channel. The juice channel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you'll see, and the reason we call it the juice channel. So we've, we, so we've, we basically designed and What's really cool and kind of novel about it is, um, you know, we're, we're patent pending on, on a, basically a juice channel cutting board that when the juice goes in into that groove, it channels all to one corner of the board. So across the entire surface, it channels to one corner. We have that spillway. I don't know if you noticed, but if you look at it, the depths start at, at, at one depth that's very, uh, very shallow or more shallow, I should say, at the opposite end of the spillway. And, and it slopes down and carries a little juice. So for an easy, uh, easy draining, whether it's the Thanksgiving turkey juice, uh, anything you want to capture, but just easy to clean. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Once it, once you use it, I think we've thought of all the functionality and, um, you know, purposely didn't put feet on it that, that is flipping it over. And, and it's such a nice cutting board that people, we see this going out on, it doesn't belong in the kitchen. It belongs in the center of the table and something we love to do. And we'll be doing those in our classes is talking about entertaining and doing a filet, a ribeye, you know, a tri-tip, a sirloin. New York, you know, New York strip and cutting all those pieces up, slicing them up and having something to serve for everybody at the table with the cheeses. That's, I mean, that's, I think, taking entertaining and, and cooking for, for people that you love and, and, and like to spend time with to the next level. Obviously, it's something that you're very excited about from a consumer standpoint. When can we expect to be able to purchase? Should be this Friday. Really? End of the week? All right. Yep. So we can just uh, visit uh, pitbarrelcooker.com or is there something we can sign up for that we'll get alerted once it really launches or what? So right now uh, it'll, it'll be ingrainusa.com. That's the the site for, to learn all about the boards, um, why, why we're the best. And, and then you can click and the exclusive site that it's sold on is, is pitbarrelcooker.com. Let me ask you this. I, Drove or drive down the streets of Cleveland regularly and every other suburb here in the metro Cleveland area, and everyone is hiring. How are you finding labor at the moment? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I think if I think everybody would like to like to know where they can find labor right now. Um, you, you're paying everybody a lot, and. It also over the course of eleven years, we've we've assembled we've assembled a good team, and you know some have stayed around, some haven't. Um, you know, I think COVID really unmasked a lot of people, and and unfortunately, you know, some people didn't have any choice. But um, it's it has not been easy for sure, and that's that's also been uh, you know some reasons why we our model. I think is very consistent and we can make sure that we, we bring a good quality product, whether it's pit barrel and grain and anything else to market that we're not trying to be everything to everybody. Um, being direct to the consumer is you have much better chances of buying a product from a manufacturer direct than, than, than you necessarily do going to a big box retail store where the supplier has been absolutely squeezed to death. Shipping prices are, are, absolutely insane and um and then the consumer expects to walk in the door and get a quality product it just you you get what you pay for that was going to be a dovetail question into that was when i look at the growth of pit barrel over these many number of years you've made some legitimate moves like Colorado to Kentucky, uh, Kentucky out to you know wherever you're at now. Uh, the business remains uh, in Louisville. You've weathered lawsuits that uh, whether people or no were were very big and potentially very threatening to the health of pit barrel cooker. You're dealing with labor. You're dealing with logistical manufacturing situations. You guys have always done it your way, and other companies will get in, get established, but. The end game is to get into this big box store that you mentioned because that's where all of this magic is going to happen. But to date, you stay out of the big box store. Why is that? I, I think for our brand specifically right now, it's not. It needs to be able to grow legs and walk out the door. So 
I, I believe that there's other products that will come out with that are, that are big box friendly, meaning you can, you know, the, and I just say it, that the, the, the screw with screw with my money box, um, the, the something, when I say big box proof, that means it can withstand people taking earned discounts when they're not earned the program fees saying you're going to advertise it when you don't, um, you know, just on and on and on the pallet didn't come in the right, in the right fashion and all these discounts that get taken and it just automatically happens regardless of what you do. So the pit barrel was, was built in a fashion that was great quality. It's a solid, sturdy product. It's maintained that if, if we were going to then take a U-turn and go, go into a big box retailer, we'd have to make it cheap. We'd have to make it to where it only lasts a few years and it wouldn't be what it is today. So, um, we'll, we'll do that. We, we will come out with, with a different product that's coded differently that will be in a good position to go into, into larger retail models. Um, and it may only last you a couple of years, but, but you're not going to spend, you know, nearly half on it. And th- there's a place for that and, you know, it'll still function well, but that's, that's real talk. That's real business. And anyone who's, who, who's been there knows how that goes. So is the overarching concept that you will continue to be your best version of pit barrel cooker going direct to consumer and people are approaching you and buying, it's not going to be going, you, you might have uh, toes in the water somewhere else, but the main core of the business will remain as it has. Yeah, absolutely. And if I understand the question, right, Greg, I think we're going to stay in our lane basically. And, and our lane is is vertical cooking, hanging meat, being being the pioneers in that. Um, you know, similar to like what 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 Weber and 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 Traeger and Green Egg are in in those categories. Um, you know, you see you know the the pellet cookers and the different and, and the different companies just tripping over themselves trying to come out with a with a new product that connects your phone differently and and it has a different different color or or or, or feel to it. And who's asking for that? the big box retailers are. They want something different than the other guy does. And it's, it, it, we're going to stay into our lane. There's no reason to change. We've, for a fraction of the price of, of many other pellet and ceramic cookers, uh, we've created the best outdoor cooking device on the planet, bar none. There's nothing better. And I'm proud to say it. And I'll, I'll always say it until something comes out better, but it's pretty tough to beat the pit barrel at, at a two forty nine price point shipped to your door on the junior and, and three forty nine. Um, every, and everyone that gets it that has any of those other cookers all says, I use it to keep my charcoal dry. I don't even use those other cookers now. So it's the, 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 the proofs in the product. Noah Glanville joining me here on the show. Pitbarrelcooker.com is the website. Ngrainusa.com is the website if you want to learn more about the beautiful cutting board that we were talking about a little earlier in the interview. If you're just tuning in, you can go back and get it in podcast tomorrow or I'll wait for the video to archive and get it that way. And Pit Barrel X or PBX uh, could be out uh, towards the end of summer-ish, uh, but we're not guaranteeing anything. And then there will be a stainless steel cooker at some point down the road, but uh, certainly we're not seeing it this year and perhaps not even through the first part of next year. Did I summarize correctly, Noah? You did. All right. Yep. That 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 sounds about right. right. And Noah will be staying in his lane as Pit Barrel Cooker is regarded. Uh, get on over to pitbarrelcooker.com. If you don't have one, pick one up. As he said, three forty nine for the flagship product. You cook you eight racks of ribs. Not many other cookers are doing that, and it does it with relative ease. And it's really easy to learn. Pit, uh, pitbarrelcooker.com is the website. Noah, always appreciate the time. And the years of support and the friendship and putting me up when we were down in Kentucky a few different times. Uh, you've always been a, a stand-up person and somebody that I admire as a human and as a business person and friend. Thank you so much for coming on again tonight. Thanks a bunch. You're always welcome anytime. All right, there he is. Noah Glanville from Pit Barrel Cooker. Again, if you don't have one, you're missing out. It's compared to everything else, as he had mentioned, very affordable and easy to use and man does it make great products by the way if you're looking if you just got one and you're trying to figure out what you should cook as the first cook if i might humbly suggest and perhaps you've never thought you would have heard me say this before but i've had it off the pit barrel cooker Uh, lamb is what you want to try rack of lamb i mean it is 
so good uh, that's the first time I ever had it was off a pit barrel cooker. And Noah took the chop and he said, stick this in your mouth and it'll change your life. The chop. And I did. And it did. Now we're eating lamb like crazy in this house. I never had it before. All right. That was Noah Glanville from Pit Barrel Cooker. PitBarrelCooker.com. And be on the lookout for PBX. Soonish. All you people in the chat. When's it coming? When's it coming? Soon. Perhaps by the end of July. Maybe mid Q3. We'll see. Stay on the lookout. We'll be back with Derek Riches here in a second. I'll talk to you quickly about Primo Cookers. The website PrimoGrill.com. A patent pending. Oh, I'm sorry. A patented oval design offers you true two-zone cooking. More than 60 cooking configurations. Made right here in the States. Precision controlled manufacturing. Highest quality ceramics that you're going to get in any ceramic cooker currently available. They have updated a few things this year. The new Easy Lift Hinge reduces the lift on the grill head by 70%. You got precision control top and bottom air flowers. They are number coordinated at this point. So you can say open to number three or four. Upgrade kits are available if you're a current owner of Primo. You don't have to sweat it or get a new one. Now, if you want to get a new one because you just want another one, do that. But if you just want to upgrade the one that you have, you can do that as well. You can visit your local dealer and see all the improvements for yourself before you buy. Then you'll be absolutely fascinated and buy at least one Primo cooker, maybe two. The website's once again PrimoGrill.com Some social media places Primo Ceramic Grill on Instagram and Primo Ceramic Grills on Facebook. The website once more PrimoGrill.com and we are back with Derek Riches right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. And this portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also visit Amazon.com to purchase as well. Tried to get Chris Becker on the show coming up, and he's like, hey, not enough people, not enough time. You'll have to wait. All right, CB, you take care of the business. I will be here when you're ready. In the meantime, it's the fourth Tuesday of the month, and that means it's time to go ahead and race to the hotline where we welcome back one of the most respected barbecue journalists in the biz. A Barbecue Central Show guest Hall of Famer. Check his website out at DerekRiches.com. We welcome back Derek Riches. Hey, Derek. Hey, Greg. How you doing? On the heels of your last visit, you may find it intriguing to know that I have booked on July 13th at 1014 in the second hour. Let's just say that. Uh, Depending... Time zones, everybody gets confused. In the second hour of the show, I have booked a segment on July 13th with Joe Clements, who is the founder slash creator of the website called The Smoked Barbecue Source, a site I had never heard of until your list. But I am anxious to speak with him and see why he started the website and the associated growth, of course. So in your opinion, because I know what Meathead would say, should I ask Joe to produce Google Analytics? No. No. You shouldn't. I should not no. do that. All right. We're not doing that. Have him turn over your t- his tax records. I, you know, it's like. Should I follow with how much is in your bank account? Because I've been known yeah, to ask that, that yeah. question as well. That's right. Everybody loves that Get question. a credit card number. You know, do the whole thing. It's- blank check, please. You know what? Go with the numbers that I published. All right. Fair enough. That's that's what I would say. Do you know anything about him other than what you dug up in your due diligence to put that list together? Um, not, I mean, not personally. I mean, he is from New Zealand and, you know, he's now living in uh, El, uh, Australia now. And I don't get down that way very often. So uh, I haven't met him. Um, 
I know he's been around for a while. I, I first found the site maybe <clears throat> two years ago. It just kept coming up in search, and I got okay. Who's who's who are these guys? Because um, I that's what I do. I do that sort of thing, and um, just kind of started following it from there. Growth rates have been phenomenal, and it shows up in search a lot. I mean, if you kind of go in and just start doing some barbecue searches, uh, you're going to find that site a lot. <laughs> so, right, well, I'm anxious to have him on here in uh, uh, the next couple weeks or so, and see what he has. Yeah, I think there'd be a a great interview. I'd, uh, I'd look forward to uh, to listening I'm to that. Looking forward to hosting him. So we'll see how it goes. Now, uh, your most recent article, which I think you put out, was it yesterday or the day before? Something like that. <laughs> Barbecue online: the early years, which for some reason makes us sound incredibly old. However, yeah, what's the inspiration yeah. for the article? What were, what were you thinking of that says, "Hey, let's go back and and track this portion of barbecue or live fire history." Well, you know, I, I, well, one, I, you know, I've been looking at a lot of new sites and, you know, kind of who's coming up. And then I got really thinking about um, a lot of the sites that I was using back in the 90s. It does sound old, doesn't it? Yes. So um, <laughs> I graduated high well, school in the 90s, 92. Yeah, rub it in. So <laughs> you look better than me. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, do a competition on that. Uh, you know, so I just got looking and, and what I was really surprised by, you know, was how many of them kind of are still out there and in the format that they were in, mm. uh, <clears throat> unchanged. Some of them, you know, websites that were created in the mid nineties that were updated till 2000, 2002, and then just kind of slowly petered out and, but they're still live. And, um, you know, it just got me really thinking about uh, the forums and the listservs and, and and kind of the spaces where, you know, you know, when I was trying to, you know, really master barbecue and get into stuff in, you know, 93, 94, 95, um, you know, where, where I was going to and kind of the conversation. So I just started really digging into this and, and I was really impressed with kind of how much you know, how, how well it, so much of that still kind of holds up, you know, I mean, they don't have, we have a lot of different cookers now. There's not, you know, page after page of how to build your own smoker and all the modifications you used to kind of have to do in those days for the smokers you could buy. Cause well, most of them were crap, but, um, well, it's true. You know, I mean, it, people were building cheap offset smokers and trying to mass market them into stores. And, you know, the classic problem of the offset smoker, right? It's 350 degrees on this side and 150 degrees on this side. And how do you balance the temperature and, you know, in something that's a thin material and just doesn't have the right airflow. So, um, but, you know, they're really in-depth conversations about, you know, the science of barbecue, what smoke actually does to food, um, you know, uh, all of those issues of, you know, the stall and, uh, you know, the Texas crutch and, you know, a lot of the methodology. But at the same time, these, you know, these people are writing for a world that thinks of barbecue as burgers and hot dogs. And, you know, that was... I mean, even when I, you know, when I started, you know, writing about barbecue in 97, that was all the questions I got, you know, what can I do with a hamburger? Why is my charcoal not light? You know, what my lighter fluid doesn't seem to light my charcoal and, you know, all of those sort of patio kind of charcoal grilling or, you know, gas grill problems. And now, you know, it, it's so sophisticated when you say barbecue, I don't think most people have that natural jump to burning chicken on a Sunday afternoon as, you know, as much as brisket and pulled pork and ribs and all those. Sort of I never things, used so. barbecue as a term in my life until I got my first Weber Smoky Mountain when my yeah. cousin, who was a barbecue caterer at the time, but I didn't really know that well, um, but I just happened to have a chance conversation with him because uh, somebody told me what he did, and I was telling him how I was going to buy a replacement grill for the Kenmore piece of crap that my wife got me that I 
<laughs> summarily cooked through the back through in like a year and a half just for overuse I, and it was cheaply built. It was like four different yeah. levels. It was, it, you know, uh, hypothetically it looked great, but uh, rubber on the road, it was about a year and a half grill right. if you used it regularly. So I was going to buy this $1,200 Gen Air stainless steel with the infrared burner in the back. thing was awesome. It was $1,200. My cousin mm-hmm. said, hey, before you do that, uh, have you thought about bar- buying a barbecue pit? And these yeah. are all terms all of a sudden I've never heard of. What's that? He started explaining everything to me. Lo and behold, I get a Weber Smoky Mountain. I get a Weber gas grill. I'm less cost uh, with the Gen Air. I have two different cookers and two different cooking styles. And away I went, found the virtual Weber Bullet.com, and away we go. Yeah. And Great that's side. where I Great learned side. about barbecue. I never said barbecue in my life uh, other than barbecue yeah. sauce. It was just grilling or whatever the protein was going to be on the grill. That's what we were talking about. It was never using the term barbecue and now it's everywhere. uh, And sometimes people use it what I would consider to be the right way. And sometimes people use it interchangeably with grilling, which I've really relaxed on over the years. But, you know, I'm, I'm endlessly fascinated as you say, with what it looked like, in uh, so I would say like 2005, uh, 2006, maybe when I got into it, maybe a little bit before with the forums, because yeah. back then, like that was hot technology, especially uh, if you yeah. were on a board that had traffic, you mm-hmm. could get an answer in minutes. You could apply that. Right. You could save and print sheets of information off. <laughs> Has that been usurped now is is youtube that version at this point or videos cooking videos and classes and all that is that where we're at uh compared to the olden days well it it you know i mean you're right in the fact that the forums were kind of the best place you were going to get information back then and now it's just you know the audience is disseminated so yeah you know somebody posts a youtube video on ribs and there's 500 comments on it just long conversations or you know I've, I've seen Instagram posts where there's, you know, just a whole conversation going on about how you do this and do that. So it's not as centralized as it was. So you, you can kind of actually get yourself boxed into a very specific way of thinking about things because, you know, 20 years ago, uh, you know, they were much broader platforms. So you didn't have, you know, the kind of, one-sidedness to it all or you know this is the way it has to be and you you know anytime someone says we've got to do it this way like 50 people would pounce on that person say nope no no you got to do it this way it's completely different but you know that conversation uh it was great to just kind of be able to watch them and yeah they would get pretty mean a lot of times but you know you, you think about people you know because i mean i was getting people writing me you know 20 years ago or something like that. It's like, oh, you know, I was on this barbecue forum. You know, I I live in Indonesia and I've been reading up on this stuff about barbecue and how do I get this grill where I am? And I'm like, I don't have no idea. But, you know, that spread so much. I mean, you know, you're talking about having Joe Clements, a guy from New Zealand who has the second most popular barbecue site in the world on your show. And, you know, that's almost... I mean, inconceivable 20 years ago, because what do people in New Zealand know about American style barbecue? And now everyone, you know, everyone has that thing. You have really, really good Texas style barbecue joints in Perth or in Dusseldorf. You know, it's like, well, we made it a a global thing. And, uh, you know, the Internet did a lot for that. What's the best carne asada marinade? Um, well, my favorite carne asada marinade is, um, lime, orange, lemon juice, tequila. Um, and then, you know, I, I have a a recipe on my website. That's the one I always use for it. People can contact me and ask for it or whatever. Um, you know, cumin. And then like, uh, what I, what I do is I, I take a, jalapenos and i just grind them up mash it oh in and then you know just release the whole thing but, seeds you know. and everything uh it full, depends on full feel, jalapenos full jalapeno sometimes wow. it depends on it depends on the audience who's going to be there who's yeah. going to be eating it sometimes that'll come out sometimes it doesn't 
um, just to get that heat on there. And then, you know, uh, getting the right meat. What do you use? Uh, I use, uh, what my favorite is flap meat. <laughs> um, Readily available where there. you're at? Uh, hit and miss, hit mm. and miss. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it'll be there, sometimes it won't. Skirt steak after that. Inside or um, outside, or does it not matter? Uh, I'm not that picky on that. Um, I mean... You know, I used to always use flank steak because it was so available, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of the flank, really. I, I, I think it just, it, it'll get too tough, you know, for me. I just, and I don't think it has the flavor. That's what I like about flap meat. It's very beefy. It has that very, very coarse um, muscle texture to it. Um, so that's my preferred. And if I see it at the store, then I will actually make carne asada because I found it. It's like, oh, I'm buying this. We're having carne asada now. Charcoal griller, or are you a, a non-discriminatory griller? Uh, for that, charcoal, definitely. Just from a um, flavor standpoint and a, and, a, yeah. uh, and a cooking standpoint? Yeah, well, I mean, I prefer charcoal um, most of the time. I mean, you know, I, I have a gas grill, and it gets fired up quite a bit simply because I'm busy or there's something going on or I just want to get something cooked quickly. But, you know, if I'm going to go to making carne asada or something like that, then yeah, it's uh, charcoal's firing up and that's where I'm going to go. Do you have a favorite brand of charcoal? You know, I'm not that picky. No? Really? I'm not. Kingsford? Um, uh, yeah, Kingsford sends me a bag of charcoal every year and they have for you and me a both. decade. Yeah. yeah the the latest version the, of the same version? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have, it, it's it's still sitting in my office because I took it out of the box and I left it in my office. It's the, the cherry wood for yep. cats. Yep. I, I don't know if they're any good. I think, um, you know, and, and then I, I think Fogo still sends me a bag every year for some reason. I don't, but I don't write about charcoal, you know. Um, Would you? Because, no. If people ask me specific details, I need to get this exact charcoal. What's the best charcoal for this application? I send them over to the Naked Wiz website. That's still because around? It's still around. There's wow. still tests and stuff. Look at that. That's yeah, like what we were just talking about, the online yeah. early years, the, the naked whiz. Yeah. What, like 20, 20, 25 years now? That, yeah. And they're still testing charcoal? And it's, I mean, it's it's complete overkill. It's just like, you know, these guys, it's, you know, take it out, lay out the whole charcoal bag, measure it all out, sort it by size, measure the ash production, the temperature, all that sort of stuff. I don't have that kind of patience to test I mean, probably 500 different charcoals they've done by now. But, you know, I mean, if you're that into charcoal, go over there and look them up. It's a fantastic site. Still looks like it did 20 years ago, too. So, yeah, great. It was, it was not that easy to navigate 20 years ago. No, no. I mean, it's still a bit. What was the worst? It, but... Let's let's throw people under the bus at the moment. <laughs> what was the worst barbecue website i know what my uh, answer is but what do you think the worst one was and we say this oh, of course with peace and, peace, love. And love, peace and love peace and love oh i, th I don't <sighs> what worse from a design or yes. just horrible information yes. no, i mean information is what you know you're going to get that anywhere but design wise right. like you you landed uh, and you just wanted to gouge your eyeballs out oh there was a lot um I don't, you know, I mean, any of those sites that came out of kind of the late nineties and, and stuff. All right. I'm going to give you the number one answer. You're, you're, okay. you're being coy, but I'll say it for you since you don't want to say it. the information on here, probably second to none. The founder of this website probably should be in the barbecue hall of fame. Worst barbecue website ever. Barbecue forum.com. The worst, mm -hmm. the worst setup incredibly difficult to navigate and i mean ruled with an iron but oh well god yeah. i mean oh. outside of the rule it was the worst to look at it never updated i think it's still no. out there but nobody's posting on We're, it anymore but holy crap yeah, like that the, was a travesty it's like the forum software point eight yeah i mean he <laughs> refused like never, to go to v bulletin like the release. rest of the world when that was all unveiling itself and it was much fresher and easier, great interface, easy to operate. But no, no, he just stuck with whatever the hell that was, and boy, was it a travesty. Yeah, it, that, that that was that was a difficult site. Yeah, it was a very difficult site. You're right, yeah. um, and you're right. It's it's still there. 
I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, um, my Barbecue Central forum is still around. I just sold it. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. No, I mean, no. Collecting it, it, like ad views. Yeah, and that that that's fun. that's funny. It's like I, I I found a website. I can't remember which one it was. I think the guy who created it died fifteen years ago. The site's still up, and it has ads on it. I mean, it has like Google AdSense ads on. Someone yeah. is getting a check for a buck right. eighty five a month. Yes, for the ads that this site still generates. That's you know, right. I mean, it's like, I mean, one of my favorite sites from back in the day was barbecuing on the internet. You know, Smoky Hail. Don't know it. No, uh, it was huge. I mean, it was gigantic at the time. Started in '96, continued to be updated till about 2010 or so. <laughs> um, uh, Charlie McMurray was the guy who created it. He was like an old oil man guy and got into the internet, created this website, and got Smokey Hale to start writing the content. And I met Smokey like twice, but he's like this old tech he's this old southern barbecue guy used to be used to work for the fbi uh under a j edgar hoover then moved to army intelligence and then somehow ended up at vanity fair and then was writing a weekly barbecue syndicated newspaper column and you know (laughs) um when i first started my barbecue site if if you found a link with the word barbecue in it it went to that site wow everywhere i mean it was like this site I, I figured in no way would I ever, ever pull the kind of traffic that they were getting um, back in 2000 and, you know, around that range. But I mean, it's still fully intact, still there um, and still has ads on it. Nice. But I mean, Smokey died about three years ago, I think. Uh, Doug Scheiding, Texas Embedded Correspondent in your latest new best friend, says... Last post on Barbecue Forum is from 15 days ago, so it's still kind of alive. So there you go. People are still I, visiting. That's, well, you know, as I said in my article, you know, before the websites, before the World Wide Web was created, there was the Usenet, and there was the discussion forums in there. It's not dissimilar from the way Reddit runs, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. It, you know, this is how we used to communicate on the internet back in, like, the 80s, so now I'm really getting old. Um there are posts on that from the last month, even though it's almost impossible to get into anymore. I mean, I think half the posts are for mail order brides. Or I'm sure something, but still it's like, wow, there are people still, wow. The, some people never change. It's just, they it cannot move on. That's right. I guess we stay as uh, Noah Glanville said, people stay in their lanes when they're comfortable. So whether you're doing it yeah. right or doing it wrong, well, I mean, that's up for discussion, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is what it's all about. If you're interested in the article, go to DerekRiches.com and the uh, Barbecue Online. The early years is right there at the front, so go ahead and click on that and read through. It's a very interesting read and a good retrace of barbecue history and really how the Internet has, has made Southern-style barbecue a, a worldwide thing. So, uh, in the meantime... Uh, again, DerekRiches.com, or on the fourth Tuesday of the month, you can wait until the end of July and see Derek right back here on the Barbecue Central Show. Derek, always appreciate the time, and thanks again for the information. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You, see you next month. All right, there he is, Derek Riches, right there. Again, DerekRiches.com, and check out the new article, BBQ Online, The Early Years. I was part of those early years, believe it or not. Hey, when we come back... Uh, we'll give away a new book from Meet Mitch, Barbecue Revolution. So stay tuned. I will talk to you quickly about Pits and Spits. Since 1983, handcrafting smokers and grills in Houston, Texas. In that time, Pits and Spits establishing itself as one of the premier brands and high-quality offset smokers and more recently pellet cookers. Pits and Spits setting itself apart by using heavy 7 and 10 gauge stainless steel in every cooker, fully welded construction that you can feel when you use the unit, a 304 stainless roll top lid, and front shelf on every single smoker. Does it matter? Yes. Well, by using higher quality materials, Pits and Spits smokers reach and maintain temperatures, allowing you to worry more about the meat than the heat. By providing a fully welded smoker, you don't have to worry about grease or smoke leaking out of the barrel or that grill rattling apart as you move through the yard. 
And by using 304 Stainless, you get an heirloom quality product. Now, where some companies are focused on being a low-cost provider, Pits and Spits focuses on craftsmanship and using quality materials. Cheaper ways to make these? Yes. But Pits and Spits doesn't like tack well, cheap stainless, electronics that you can't trust. Having in-house manufacturing gives them control of the design and standards. Not something you find in from stuff brought in from overseas. Their steel suppliers get your material to be used in some of the harshest environments around, so they're going to perform in any and all conditions. And their controllers are made right here in the States, so they have unimpeded transparency into the program. Pits and Spits is a dealer network across the country. If there isn't one close to you, feel free to give Koi a call in the shop, 844-650-6250. Whether you're a backyarder or a competition team, Pits and Spits has a product for you. You can check out all the products at pitsandspits.com, all spelled out, or view their pits in the wild across all social media at Pits and Spits. Again, all spelled out. Your chance to win coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now's the time where we give stuff away. People give us stuff on the show to give away at no money for you. That's why it's free. Send an email on its way when I tell you to. That's why we give stuff away. Okay, as promised, your chance to win Barbecue Revolution in... Innovative barbecue recipes from an all-star pit master. That being Mitch Benjamin. Meet Mitch, char bar owner. There's some guest pit masters in here. High-quality photos. Look here. It's a grilled corn and Dungeness crab dip with jalapeno, baby. If you want this book which I'm happy to autograph for you. Send me an email, and in the subject line, put WOMP! As many O's as you want. Be the first to send me an email, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com, and in the subject line, put WOMP! And you can win the latest effort by Mitch Benjamin Barbecue Revolution. Good luck. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. Hey, this portion of the show being brought to you by Fireboard. Monitor up to six different temperatures simultaneously. Connect to Wi-Fi for cloud-based monitoring or connect via Bluetooth. And if you have Alexa or the Google Assistant in your home, you're in luck because Fireboard fully integrated with both. Find out more by visiting fireboard.com or call 816-945-2232. That's 816-945-2232. Fireboard 2, Fireboard 2 Drive, and Fireboard 2 Pro. Fabulous. All right, that's going to wrap the first hour. We thank Noah Glanville, pitbarrelcooker.com, and then we thank fourth Tuesday of the month regular guest of the first hour, Derek Riches from DerekRiches.com, as he talks about barbecue on the internet, the early years, because now we're in the whatever years, the late, the middle years. Who knows where this technology thing is going? Let's call it that we're in the middle years right now. Hey, we have a winner for the... For the Barbecue Revolution book, it's a Dean Simbro- Simborski. Good job, Dean. Way to be in on it. All you have to do is now send me another email. In the subject line, put book winner. And then in the body of the email, send me your shipping address. And I will get to the uh, post office at some point this week, maybe next week. And I'll ship it right out to you. And if you uh, also include in the body, if you want me to autograph Mitch's book, it's a thing we're doing. All right, let's head to the second hour. We're a little late, but we'll catch up on the uh, other side before we get to the embedded correspondence. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> 